Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of Bucket Coding. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to use the player command preprocess event to cancel or handle uh, different commands before they are executed. Um, so the example that we're going to use is we're going to disable the use of secret commands like slash question mark, which will show you um, a list of all of the plugins as well as um, all the commands for the plugins. Um, and then the commands like slash pl or slash plugins that will uh, reveal a list of all of the plugins. These are some commands that a lot of server owners might not want their users to be able to use. So we're going to disable that. There are also other uses, like for example, uh, if you were making a mini game and you only wanted to allow commands from that mini game to be run, you would use the exact same thing. You could allow commands from that video game, but you wouldn't want people um, to be using, you know, another um, command that doesn't go with it because that could potentially mess something up. It could be cheating. It could teleport them out of the arena, which would be bad. Um, so as I mentioned at the very beginning, this does use a player command preprocess event, which is a long name uh, for one of the many events that Bucket offers. So first of all, we need to do our on enable. I'm going to put my override annotation. Always good practice. Um, and then we're going to say bucket dot get server dot get plugin manager dot register events this comma this and make sure that uh, your class extends to have a plugin and implements listener like always uh, and then we're going to have our at event handler public void on player command this is a player command pre-process event e. So now we have this, and why is this an error? Did I misspell something? Ah, I see. So the pre-process is one word. The p in process is not capitalized. Uh, but if we go ahead and take a look at uh, all of the methods in here, um, you will see, and we only want to look at the ones that are not deprecated, obviously. Uh, get message, that's obviously going to be the most important one. Uh, and then get player is also going to be important. You can also set player, set message, and set canceled. And that's pretty much all uh, that you need to worry about. So the message returns the full message of the command. It would probably be a better idea to have like um, a string called command and then a string array called args. Uh, which is similar to how it works, you know, in the definition of a command. But the way that they have it here is get message, which returns the entire message, and I believe that it does have the slash in front of it. Um, so then, obviously, get player is going to be the player who sent it, and then you can do set canceled to set, uh, you know, to cancel the command if you don't want it to happen. So let's go ahead, and we're going to say first of all, um, if e dot get player dot is op return. So if the player is op, there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to, you know, see a list of the plugins or whatever. So if the player is op, then we want to return. Um, then we want to go ahead and say if e dot get message dot starts with slash question mark or e dot get message dot starts with slash pl or E dot get message dot starts with slash plugins and you could obviously add more here but we just want to see e dot set canceled true and we should probably send them a message telling them that they can't do it so e dot get player dot send message check color dot red and we're gonna say uh, you may not run this command whatever message you want to send and then that should be good. Over in the plugin.yml, we don't need to register any commands because, um, you know, we're not, we don't have any commands. We're just listening on one event. Uh, and then everything should work just fine. So let's go ahead and test it out. I'm going to export this and I'm going to call it no secret commands. And good. Let's go over to YouTube 
and bucket coding, testing server, and start server. In the meantime, I will get Minecraft open, and then we can go ahead and try this out. Okay, whoops, let's run it again. Bucket coding, whoops. Sorry about this, guys. Testing server, start server. Ah, oh, boy, it keeps asking me to upgrade Gradle. So I'm just gonna manually drag that in, and there we go. I'll upgrade Gradle later. And I think that we want to go back to 1.7.10 for this. And, okay. And done. So let's go to multiplayer and we shall join to localhost. That should be it. I'll go ahead and move this up. Oh, okay. So we got an IO exception and the game crashed. Alright. Let me give it one more try. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to have to see if I can get in. No, game keeps crashing. Alright, uh, I'm going to just pause this video to see if I can get in here. Right, so guys, uh, I've been trying. I don't know what's wrong, but uh, I just tried to go into a single player world and the same thing happened. So, um, as you can see, I have a ton of crash reports here. So, um, I clearly can't get into the game. So I can't really test this. Uh, I'm going to put the code in the description, and uh, if there is an issue with it, just leave a comment, but I believe that that should work fine. I don't see why there would be an issue with it. Uh, so again, I really can't test it. I tried a couple of different versions. I'm on 1.7.9, which is the correct version for this version of Craft Bucket, and as soon as I join it, just goes ahead and crashes. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and end the video. As always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button. And I'll see you guys soon uh, with some more coding videos. Bye for now.